what foods fight moodiness and stress? A couple of things. Um, I mentioned earlier that we had, and others had found that plant-based diets along with exercise were antidepressants. Um, and also they seem to help against anxiety. Um, we don't know exactly why that is, but a number of studies have seemed to suggest that that's the case. Um, a couple of other things though, um, one, one obvious thing is be careful about caffeine because caffeine will, it has the effects that you already be aware of if you're, you know, if, you, if you're trying it. Um, but one other thing, um, if a woman has PMS um, or if a man or woman has moody spells or there are times where you just feel not, not yourself, try this, um, take uh, a couple of days and grill up for breakfast, some tempeh or some tofu. And I guess everyone knows about tofu, but you may not know about tempeh, T-E-M-P-E-H. It's uh, fermented soybeans. They sell it in a block at the health food store right next to the tofu and just cut it into little kind of sort of like a pack of cards or maybe half the thickness of a pack of cards, marinate it in soy sauce and grill it in an on-stick pan. It's, it's roughly bacony kind of, um, and have some of that every day. Richard Workman at MIT taught me this, or he taught me the, the, the mechanism, which is um, a, a, a protein load in the morning, and it's gonna be plant protein, so there's no animal fat in it, there's no cholesterol, nothing like that, but it's a, a protein load that precedes carbohydrates that you get later, um, like toast that you might have with it. Um, the protein load blocks serotonin production. Um, and that way tiredness and fatigue seem to melt away and your mood will be more stable. Um, so um, where a, a typical case would be, I've been having organic orange juice every day and uh, for breakfast and that's my whole thing, but I'm not really feeling very good in the afternoon. I'm feeling moody and crabby and stuff like that and down. Um, try this for a couple of days. Try my little tempeh or tofu trip um, have that as the first thing that you eat uh, in the morning and see if your mood isn't, isn't a little bit better. Do not do this with animal protein, but with plant protein, it's a good idea. How do you prevent getting multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's or ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease? Uh, with Lou Gehrig's disease, um, I think, I, I really just don't think we have the research yet to, to know um, what a person can do. And, but with regard to MS, um, to a lesser extent, I, I guess with Parkinson's also the, the, the research has not trudged along as fast as it needs to. But with MS, let me say, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition where the body is, is um, attacking the nerves and particularly nerve transmission is um, attacked and is impaired. And researchers have discovered that surprisingly, uh, there are people who have changed their diets to exactly the kind of diet that we've been talking about for diabetes or for hormonal issues. And they have found that MS in some cases just remits. Um, and uh, Saray Stancic, S-T-A-N-C-I-C, is, is a physician who has written a, a new book um, about this. She has, a, she has a movie called Code Blue, where she describes as a physician being diagnosed with MS and being debilitated by it, but then changing her diet and recovering. And it's the most remarkable story ever. Um, and there, there are many, many, many others who have done this. Uh, John McDougall has done great writing on this very same topic. So, and anybody, if, if you have MS um, now, or if you're a neurologist who's treating MS, we should always be using healthy, low-fat, plant-based diets. The effects I think are gonna be quite variable from patient to patient but there is never a case where it is contraindicated. How do you prevent osteoporosis and broken bones? Uh, well, a couple of things. I guess everybody knows about calcium, uh, but you don't need dairy calcium because frankly, cows don't make calcium. The calcium that ended up in milk came from, well, it came from grass. Um, I hope you're not eating grass, but the human equivalent is kale or collards or broccoli or some other more palatable green leafy vegetable. Green leafy vegetables draw the calcium from the soil that's in their leaves. And so you want to eat that. Uh, you need calcium, but you need more. You need vitamin D to absorb calcium. And nature's way of doing that is to put ultraviolet light from the sun and the UV light hits your skin 
And inside your skin, the vitamin D is formed and that goes to your digestive tract that pulls the calcium from the foods that you've eaten right into your blood. Um, but modern humans try to avoid UV light and they stay indoors or they live in New Jersey where it's cold right now. And so they're not um, getting any sunlight on their skin. So they probably wanna take a, a, a vitamin D supplement something like 2000 international units would be a pretty typical regimen. Um, and give your, give your bones a reason to live. Uh, you need to exercise. Um, and even walking and, and, and running, you don't think of that as exactly weight bearing exercise, but it is, you know, it strains your, your hip joints, strains your spine, uh, do some push-ups for your wrists because you don't want to snap a, a wrist. And uh, that combination is a, is a pretty good combination. <clears throat> Is there anything negative about foods from cans or plastic? And how about the receipt paper at the grocery store? Um, yeah, um, this is something that I wrote about in uh, Your Body in Balance. Um, there are, in fact, um, uh, chemicals in the lining of, it, of a can and, and where this really became, um, where, where this kind of caught the headlines was um, with Progresso. You know, Progresso soup is like a great soup. I mean, it's delicious. And it's, you know, it kind of looks like a step above other soups. You know, cans are a little bit bigger, sounds vaguely Italian. Um, but researchers discovered that if you had Progresso vegetable soup, um, you, something called BPA, uh, bisphenol A, would get into your blood um, and into your urine. And that's not so cool. Um, so there are cans of soup that are BPA free. And they just don't, they make the lining of the can without BPA, which is great. And, and, and Progresso too. Uh, Progresso has vowed to make this very same transition. I don't know if they've quite gotten there yet, but hopefully they, hopefully they have. Um, here's the problem. You go to the health food store, you get all your BPA free cans and you go to the cashier and you pay with your credit card, the cashier hands you uh, the receipt and you crumble it up and throw it out. Um, what you didn't realize is that the paper was BPA coated and it, it cools through the skin. I'm talking about the paper on your credit card receipt or um, the little paper that comes out of the ATM um, tickets, like plane tickets, and you know, that sort of slick paper that's BPA coated paper. Um, how big of a risk is it? My hope is that it's not too huge of a risk, um, but it's there. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's a chemical that you don't want. What can a woman do to help with cramps and premenstrual syndrome? Oh, you know, this is something we discovered just completely by accident. Um, I was sitting at my desk back 20 some years ago and a young woman called me up and she had just debilitating cramps, which, you know, many women have monthly menstrual cramps. Um, and, but for about one in 10, it's bad enough that you're gonna have trouble getting to work that day, you know, without like a fistful of ibuprofen. So, um, I, when this woman called for help, I, she wanted Demerol, which is you know, a narcotic painkiller. And I said, well, I can give you a Demerol for a couple of days, but what are we going to do to stop this from happening next month? And I, it, I started, to, I reasoned that we have seen research from the world of breast cancer that has given us some hints about how we might attack this condition. And, and let, let me just take a minute and describe it. G typical garden variety cramps come from the fact that the uterus every single month, the, the uterus is the most optimistic organ in the body. Every month it thinks we're going to get pregnant. So what it does is the lining of the uterus thickens up. That's the endometrium and it thickens up. And the more estrogen you have in your blood, the more it thickens up. And then at the end of the month, when the disappointed uterus finds out that we're not pregnant, um, that endometrial layer disintegrates. It just breaks up and that it goes away in menstrual flow, okay? So as it breaks up, it causes really bad cramping. It releases prostaglandins that cause cramps. Um, so anyway, um, the more estrogen you have, the more that endometrial lining thickens up. And researchers in the cancer world had discovered that a really high fiber diet will bring down estrogen levels in women, And a high fat diet will bring up estrogen levels. So as this woman was calling me, it went through my mind. I thought, what are your, what's causing these darn cramps? What if we bring up the fiber, bring down the fat, and maybe next month you won't have such too much endometrial thickening. Maybe you'll feel better. So I said, I said to her, I said, let me give you Demerol for a couple of days. But do you want to try an experiment, low-fat vegan diet for a month? And she did. And it was an absolute cure for her. 
And she, we kept in touch and she discovered that if she would let, even if she would stay vegan, but if she'd bring a little bit of fat back into it, she would really pay for it at the end of the month. So I did a study with Georgetown University where we, we did a randomized trial and the diet works. Um, so for anybody who's got cramps or, or who has PMS, um, like bloating and water retention or moodiness before your period, just give it a try. No animal products keep the oils scrupulously low. And people don't like to hear that because they think, well, I want some extra virgin olive oil and some nuts and guacamole. Um, those are delicious foods they're gonna work against you if you're trying. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I really wish guacamole was friendlier to your body than it is. Um, but all these fatty foods are gonna work against you. So vegan, uh, keep those oils low and try this for a couple of cycles, a couple of months, and you will be sold. It's just a really cool thing.